Arcadian Vanguard presents the Wrestling News in your daily wrestling newscast for Sunday, September 22nd, 2024. Good morning, I'm Mike Sempervivi. We begin today with last night's episode of AEW Collision broadcast live on TNT from the Mass Mutual Center in Springfield, Massachusetts. In the main event, the Grizzled Young Veterans teamed with Roderick Strong, Roosh, and the Beast Mortos to win a 10-man tag team match over Hook, FTR, and the Outrunners after Roosh pinned Dax Harwood. Roosh and Mortos double-teaming Dax. Dax the Axe slumps down to the bottom. Here comes Roosh. Oh, the horns. That could do it. One, two, three. It is. Wow. Unbelievable. Holy cow, he wasn't messing. Following the match, color commentator Nigel McGuinness cut a promo on Brian Danielson, hoping that Danielson accepts his challenge for this Wednesday at Dynamite's Grand Slam. Because if there is a God in heaven, it will happen. And if there's not, may the devil hear my prayer. The program opened with Dustin Rhodes and Sammy Guevara retaining the ROH World Tag Team title over Matt Taven and Mike Bennett in the bunkhouse brawl after Guevara pinned Taven following a senton from off the top of a ladder. Using the kendo stick to keep Mike Bennett down, Sammy... Second attempt. Fans, as you can see, so stand and stop the landing. One, two, three. Still the chance. In other results, Darby Allen pinned Evil Uno. AEW Women's Champion Mariah May beat Lady Frost in a non-title match, and Serena Deeb went over Queen Aminata. In other AEW news, AEW pay-per-views will stream on Max beginning in January and possibly sooner, according to a report from Wrestling Observer contributor Andrew Zarian. On his Matman podcast Saturday, Zarian reported, quote, They could do it sooner, but I know that they are planning on January. I do know that pay-per-views are going to be on there. They don't have exclusivity on the pay-per-view, so it will also be available other places, end quote. This past Monday, Puck's John Orand reported that he believes AEW and WBD are close to finalizing a new three-year deal with an option, with an announcement possible sometime this week. And finally, in independent news, Zilla Fatu was pulled from a Game Changer wrestling show on Friday with the company noting a return is unlikely. In a social media post on Friday night prior to the company's show in Philadelphia, GCW stated, quote, Zilla Fatu will not be appearing on tonight's GCW event in Philadelphia or any GCW shows for the foreseeable future. We tried our best to avoid this situation, but we have reached an impasse. We wish him the best, end quote. 25-year-old Zilla, real name Isaiah Fatu, is the son of the late Eddie Fatu, who was better known as Umaga and Jamal during his time with WWE. Fatu last wrestled for GCW on September 15th, and it's long been speculated that he could eventually sign with WWE, joining six other NOIE Maya Via family members that are currently on the active roster. And before we leave you today, we'd like to remind you that however you consume your content, you can find the wrestling news 24 hours a day and seven days a week across social media. On Twitter, follow us at Wrestling News AV. Our Facebook page is also Wrestling News AV. The Wrestling News can also be found on the Arcadian Vanguard YouTube page. And for those who utilize Amazon Echo devices, just tell Alexa to play the Wrestling News podcast. And remember to make sure you add podcast at the end. Once again, for daily updates, breaking news, and more, follow the Wrestling News across social media. And that's the news for today. If anything happens, we will be here to tell you about it. No clickbait, no paywall, just the wrestling news. The Wrestling News is a division of Arcadian Vanguard, and the Wrestling Newscast is a production of the Arcadian Vanguard Podcast Network.